Hi, I'm Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Today's the 19th of April. It's, uh, it's snowing outside. Hmm. Uh, I've got a briefing today. I've got a few points that I want to go over. Uh, first one is, I made a mistake on this calculation last time and many people pointed it out to me, but what I failed to do was add back um, the boar population. Remember we took the DNR's number 1500, cut it in two because half would be sows. That's the female of the species. And half would be boars. And uh, each sow would have 10. And the numbers come out like this. And I was not adding back the boars. So I added back the boars and the numbers come out to be around 41 million uh, animals that would be running in the state of Michigan in 2013 if the DNR's numbers are correct. Now we know that they're not because no one has even seen any of these pigs, but so be it. I'm going to go back to the declaratory ruling a little bit, um, and I have a point to make here. The declaratory ruling has uh, characteristics in it, and if your pigs have even one of these characteristics, then you have a feral pig. Um, they're not looking at whether the pigs are outside of your fences or inside. Inside the fence, if they have any of these characteristics, your pig is feral. So they're abusing the way the English language is designed to be used. But um, I'm just going to go through the last four of them here. Um, this is the declaratory ruling, feral swine. Uh, you can find it at the DNR's website or at Baker's Green Acres. Bakersgreenacres.com, that's our website. Okay, I'm going to start with... Uh, the fourth to last, and it's skeletal appearance. Suscrofa skeletal appearance is distinct. All right, they don't tell you how it's distinct, they just say it is distinct. All right, structures include skull morphology, dorsal profile, and external body measurements, including tail length, body length, hind foot length, ear length, snout length, shoulder height. Again, they put in no values to those so there's no way that you can know what they're talking about. All right, it's, this was, we thought this was put together by people who didn't know how to write, but actually this was put together masterfully, and it's, it's very confusing, and it's designed to be that way. All right, tail structure, Sue Scrofer exhibits straight tails. They contain the muscular structure to curl their tails, um, typically held straight. Uh, Sue Scrofer exhibit either curly tails or straight tails. And again, remember... One or more of these characteristics qualifies you as a felon um, if you have a pig that, you know, that they say is that you're harboring uh, invasive species. Ear structure, Suscrofa, erect ears, but they have the ability to have folded or floppy ears. So that's uh, if their ears are like a German Shepherd or a uh, Labrador Retriever, that's an illegal pig. Other characteristics. This is number nine. This is you don't want to forget this one. It's other characteristics not currently known to the Michigan DNR, but identified by the scientific community. So they're leaving the door open to to bring up anything and say that you've got an illegal pig. All right, now we know that this is about as foolish as this right here. Forty-one million animals running the state of Michigan. Let's let's just say it was. I mean, conservatively, if we cut that number in half or we cut it down to one-tenth, you know, it's still a huge number of animals. And I wouldn't have to try and convince you that there aren't feral pigs. You would have to try and convince me that uh, it, would be, it would be the other way around is, is what I'm saying. I mean, you would know that there are feral pigs, and I would know that there are feral pigs, but they're not. And that it's absolute foolishness. And so is this declaratory ruling. Now, I'm offended at this. That there are people in Lansing that are paid with my tax dollars <coughs> to come up with this type of foolishness. Um, but it does happen in government. All right. Now, I've written a name on the board behind me, and that name is Bill Schutte. Bill Schutte is our Attorney General. Now, Mr. Schutte, honestly, I mean you no disrespect. But your staff has accused me of not understanding what your function is as the Attorney General. And I would, I, I'm going to explain to you that I do understand your function. All right? First of all, the Attorney General is an elected official. That means he is accountable to the people who elect him. He was not elected by the DNR or the Michigan Department of Ag. He was elected by we, the citizens. All right? So he is accountable to us. He is responsible to provide uh, legal support to 
um, state agencies like DNR, DEQ, MDA, all those beloved um, state agencies. But that does not mean that his job is to defend them when they are in a position, when they put themselves in a position of being defenseless. What I mean defenseless is you cannot defend against straight tails and curly tails. That is absolute, re, absolutely ridiculous. It is absolutely not reasonable to allow these agencies to impose this on us. Now, um, Mr. Schutte, you are in place to review this, and I cannot believe at this point that this hasn't gone across your desk and created uh, some amount of havoc. I'm sure that it has. And uh, your duty, I believe, to the citizenry, to the citizenry, is to go back to the state agency that has put this forward and get an explanation. Why did you put this forward? And find out, is there something illegal going on here? Um, should the pork producers be allowed to detail Michigan Department of Ag, uh, Michigan Department of Natural Resources, Michigan State University, to, to put together a, a feral swine working group and uh, trounce the rights of citizens like me? Sh you know, the, I, I think your duty really is to find out who's behind this and why. You know, obviously, I am not hurting anybody, and the people like me are not hurting anybody. We do not have a feral swine problem in this country, I mean in the state, and you know it. Now, I'm going to show you something else here, too, and this is for the public's concern. I've showed this to you before, but this is a group of files. There's four of them here. These are depositions that were taken in August, and the people that we took their depositions was uh, Mr. Guthrie from MSU, Dr. Bates from MSU, Rodney Stokes, who used to be the uh, director of the DNR, and Nancy Franks, who is the number two vet for um, Department of Ag, Michigan Department of Ag, MDA. <clears throat> and in these files, uh, there is some very interesting evidence, very damning evidence, and the Attorney General's office has full access to this. So they're able to see this just as though I'm able to see this. Uh, and I believe that they're derelict in their duty in not only defending these people, but I believe that they should be asking, opening investigations and finding out why, DNR, did you take this detail? Why, MDA, are you taking this? Why are you doing this to these citizens? You can't do this. And I believe there's some things going on here that are very illegal. Now, I can't show this to you because there's a gag order on this. I would love to, um, but if I were to show this to you, I couldn't use it in my court uh, uh, hearing, which is coming up. Uh, the first one is going to be in May, May 3rd, and the second one is the trial is going to be in August on August 27th. It's a four-day trial. Um, some of the things that are in here are things like uh, domestic pork production is defined in here. And uh, just that definition could really change the way this whole thing is being looked at. Uh, the Attorney General's Office will not cough up that information. Um, contained in here is strong support that every pig that walks the face of this planet is a descendant of the Eurasian wild boar. And th that's the, the focus of the declaratory ruling is the Eurasian boar or the Russian. And then also this conclusive... Um, evidence in here that, uh, that points to the Michigan pork producers as the originators of the feral swine working group, which uh, the person has to really ask themselves why and uh, who does it benefit, uh, okay? So uh, there, I'm going to use a word here, and I know some of you don't like this, but the word is reasonable. The converse of that would be unreasonable. Now. In American society, we have done so well because we are people of reason. We are very reasonable people, right? We give, we take. We give, we take. Um, this declaratory ruling and the things that have come from this are very unreasonable, all right? When we elect people to offices, high offices, like Mr. Schutte here, uh, 
uh, to the Attorney General's office. There's an awful lot of responsibility that comes with that. And we need people who are reasonable, right? Not people who are unreasonable. Um, for the Attorney General's office to just press through on this, um, file an injunction against my farm so I can't sell animals. Um, their latest antic has been this. Uh, they are fighting uh, our request for a jury trial. I don't think that I'm being unreasonable in asking for a jury of my peers in my trial. I, I think that's quite reasonable. Um, they do not want me to have a jury trial. Every time that they don't want something, you really have to ask yourself the question, why? Why don't they want these depositions to be in the public's hand? Why? Why don't they want us to have a jury trial, me and my family? I think we're due a jury trial. Why is that? All right? And it goes right here. Uh, Mr. Schutte, I think um, people put their trust in you to be a reasonable individual. And this foolishness that's been going on uh, seems to indicate that uh, you're not being reasonable. And uh, this does fall on your office. And I'm, uh, I'm convinced of that. Now, um, okay, we do have our trial coming up in August. And here we go again. Um, I've got four months that I have to make. Um, I've got to dispel some, some rumors that are going around here. Um, we, around Christmas time, we did have to uh, put down half of the herd. We absolutely did. Um, as you know, animals eat a lot every day. And you cannot allow your animals to go hungry. It won't work anyway because they'll, they'll look for food. They'll go through the fences to look for, for food. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll try to find food someplace. So um, we did have to put down half of the herd. And that was right at Christmas time. And uh, that was a tragic thing. But um, the, the state has made it impossible for us to sell these animals within the state. And they have made it impossible for us to get them into slaughter at uh, our normal slaughterhouse. So that's what we had to do. We did it ourselves. Um, they were not just killed and pushed in a hole, they were, um, they were killed and they were harvested and we made that meat available to people that really needed it. <clears throat> so um, that's the straight poop on that, but we still have four more months to go before our trial and I don't think everything is going to be rosy the day after we win in court because uh, the state has gone around MDA and DNR and they've, they've said uh, that our pigs are diseased uh, that our pigs carry parasites, and they're a they're illegal one. Um, they're, they've said in the, one of their last publications, uh, Mr. Shuey, this is from your office, that anybody that receives a pig from us, that were to buy a pig from us, they would slap them with a $10,000 fine. So obviously no one's going to buy our pigs because they're afraid of getting beat up on, like we're being beat up on by you. Um, so uh, we are kind of in hurting status as far as dollars go. I mean, serious hurting status. But we have to hang on until August. And uh, so I need some help. I need some help uh, make bills and, uh, and our lawyer's fees and stuff like that. So here we are again. Um, but I will not quit um, so long as I am able to ask for help and, and do my duty. So I'm going to sign off for now. I hope everybody has a good weekend. This is Mark. Coming to you from Baker's Green Acres, and remember, anyone can farm.